from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Let us all stand as we worship God this morning. And I trust that all have come with a praise on their lips and song in their heart. And brothers and sisters, God has brought us through a week. I don't know what kind of week you've had. But whatever it has been, you have got something to give God thanks for. You have got something to praise God for. So this morning, we are going to praise God and give him what is due unto him. For only he alone is worthy. Only he alone deserves all the praise. So let us stand as we worship God this morning, as we approach God's throne in prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we give you thanks, we give you the praise, we give you the honor and the glory this morning, God. Father God, as we are gathered here this morning, God, in your sanctuary and via the Zoom platform, we say thank you, Lord God, for waking us in our right state of mind. We say thank you, God, for the protection that you have given us during the course of the night. God, we are here today, Lord God, not because of any good thing that we have done, but because of your grace, your love, your faithfulness, and your mercy towards us. So God, this morning, I just pray, Lord, as we are gathered here, God, that we may lift up your name, God. As you said in your word, if your name be lifted up from the earth, God, you will draw all men unto you. So Father God, this morning, as we are here, Lord God, I pray, God, that some soul, Lord God, may come to know you. Someone may be drawn closer to you, Lord God, whether it be through the music, through the reading of your word, to the preach word, God, oh God, whatever it may be, we say thank you this morning, oh God, for what you're about to do. Holy Spirit, we welcome you this morning into this place. We say come, take your place, have your way in us and among us. Do what only you can do, Lord God. And God, all these things we ask in no other name, but in the matchless name of Jesus, amen. As we seek to worship God this morning, let us go to the call of worship. We gather to worship God and ponder, what can we bring to the Lord? We here do what is right to love mercy and walk humbly with your God. We gather to celebrate God and to ask, what can we bring to the Lord? We learn, do what is right, to love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. We gather as the people of God in this time and space, and as we examine our lives and our relationships, we are asking, what can we bring to the Lord? We listen and understand what the Lord God is saying to us as we worship our God. May it May always, always be so whenever, whenever we, we come, come to God in worship, worship prayer, and, and praise. praise. Amen. We will now blend our voices and sing the song, Blameless. Holy God of all creation, in your present light abounds. Here we stand in trip trepidation. Who may tread your holy ground? Unclean, sinful, so unworthy, surely none of us may dare. Surely in your presence holy, we would die before your glare.
only one the royal son can. He is the way and he alone, only he can lead us this morning. Let us pray. Faithful God, in the world of your creation, you made the seasons to change. You made the sun to shine and the rain to fall, the vines to bear fruit and the fields to produce good things. You alone are our strength and security. You alone bring us rest and comfort. We turn to you as a source of all life, marveling at your wisdom, seeking to learn your purpose for our lives. We offer you our praise and thanksgiving, for you are the God who made us, the Christ who mends us, and the Spirit who brings us life. Faithful God, even though we know you are the source of our lives, we confess we often turn our backs on you. We speak and think in ways that deny our loyalty and love for you. We ignore our own needs and the needs of others. We have anger and say things that cause others pain. In your mercy, restore us to right relationships with you and with one another. We'll now blend our voices and sing, I stand in awe of you. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. to stand.
when it's the night before going to school and I'm picking out my clothes and making sure I have all my school supplies, We'll begin again, and children, when I finish reading, you look on the screen, and then you repeat what is up there. When is the night before going to school, and I'm picking out my clothes and making sure I have all my school supplies. Jesus is with me. When I'm waking up and eating a healthy breakfast to start the day. Jesus is with me. When I'm getting on the school bus or being driven to school, Jesus is with me. When I meet my teachers and new friends in class, Jesus is with me. When I'm playing with my friends at recess, Jesus is with me. When I'm finding the right school bus to ride home, Jesus is with me. When I'm telling my family about my day at school, Jesus is with me. When I'm praying at night and thanking God for my family, my friends, and my school, let us all pray together. Thank, Thank you, Jesus, Jesus, for always being by my side. I know that if I get nervous or afraid, you will be there with me. When I see my backpack, I remember that you are always with me. I know that I can talk with you anytime, day or night, and for that I am so thankful. I pray this all in your name, amen. Oh, holy God, the time is come when school begins. As we, as you, we your children, begin our studies, we ask a blessing on our backpacks in which we carry our books and notebooks, markers and pens and pencils we will use to learn. O oh Lord of life and love. Hear our prayer. prayer. Bless, O oh God, all who will teach children in the coming days and weeks and months. Give them the wisdom to find inspiration for each child. Give them the energy and creativity and love that will make their work a blessing to us, your children. O oh Lord of life and love. Hear our prayer. Bless, O oh God, all school administrators, that they may be faithful stewards of the resources entrusted to their care. Make them fair and merciful, able to do their crucial work with a spirit of grace and compassion, O oh Lord of life and love. Hear our prayer. Bless, O oh God, each one gathered here that we, will, that we will seek every opportunity to grow in our knowledge and love of you, in our church, school classes, all our classes for youth and students and adult learners. Grant that we may see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly, O Lord of life and love. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. And bless, O God, all our cherished children, those whom we have promised to love and nurture at their baptism. Keep them safe, Keep them excited, keep them ever seeking to learn more and to develop their gifts. Grant that through study, we may gain the tools to grow in love and faith and service all our days. O oh Lord of life and love. Hear our prayer. Bless, O oh God, these backpacks and the children who carry them. God bless God these bless bags, bags and, and the, the children, children who will use them. them. Be with them as they learn and grow this year. Show them how to serve you and help them to teach us all about your love. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll, at this time, the, we'll sing the song, God of Our Learning, after which the children will come forward with their backpacks. We are to have... Reverend Owen Warner with us this morning, our acting superintendent, but as I can see, he's not here as yet. So we'll just sing the song, and if he comes while we are singing, then he will do the blessing of the backpacks for the children. So I will invite all the children to stand again as we sing the song, God of All Learning.
all learning, God of all knowing, why the children come forward with their backpacks, please. pause at this junction in our service just to acknowledge you the one who gives every good gift we thank you O God for these children we thank you O God that you would have formed them in their mother's womb we thank you O God that by your grace and by your mercy you have kept them to this point we thank you O God that they have engaged on an educational journey and we simply ask oh God that you who art good will indeed bless them go before them oh God go behind them go beside them even beneath them and within them God But all that they face and all that they will encounter in this new school year, that they will be protected by your almighty hand. So even our oh God, we ask for a bloodline, the blood of your son Jesus the Christ, to surround them on every side that no harm or danger shall indeed come nigh. We lift up before you their parents as well, God, and teachers everywhere, asking that you grant patience and understanding as they engage in this great enterprise. Bless all in their going out and in their coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. I'm going to ask you just to raise your bag or raise your bag. Yes, you could take it off and just raise your bag. And so God, as symbols of, of learning, we pray, O oh God, that these bags will indeed be blessed. The books and the materials that they contain will indeed be used for the blessing and the educational development of your children. Let them lack nothing, but have everything that they do need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may now go back to your seats, children.
bless all who learn and bless those who guide them. Bless those who teach them and counsel and care. May they remember you walk beside them through all their school days, you Lord, are there. And I repeated this line this morning because we truly need to ask God to bless our children because we're living in a time where it is not easy. It is not easy. I don't know who have it easy, but it's not an easy time. The children, they, they become frustrated. Even adults become frustrated. So we need to ask God to guide them. We need to ask God to continue bless them. Those who are going to counsel them, those who are going to take care of them, and those who are going to teach them. Brothers and sisters, let, not, uh, let us not take this time for granted. This is, time, this is a time where we're living in. I don't even really know what to say, but all I can say, if you ain't got God at the forefront of your life, you ain't got nothing. It ain't easy. Even when you're walking with God, it's not easy because you are tempted, you have trials, you, have, you talk about it. But with God in the ship, and as the captain, you know you will sail good. Sometimes, yes, you're going to cry. Yes, sometimes you want to give up. Sometimes you want to throw up your hand and throw in the towel. But God, in the ship, as a captain, your sailing will be good. So let us continue to ask God to guide us, to lead us each and every day. We are not living in no easy time. And we are, I have to say we, because if one default, everybody default. We are taking life for granted. This is not the time for it. This is the time, if you don't know Jesus Christ, to accept him as your Lord and Savior. If you know him and you're walking with him, just the closer walk with thee should be a song that you should be singing daily. Because every day, we need to walk closer with God. I take this opportunity even now to welcome Reverend Owen Warner among us this morning as he will bring forth the word that God has laid upon his heart. And I pray that those of us who are gathered in the sanctuary and via the Zoom platform, that our heart may be receptive to the word that God has sent our way this morning. I want to say welcome to each and every one in the sanctuary this morning. Uh, those watching via the Zoom platform, is there anyone visiting with us this morning for the first time or for the first time in a long time? Please stand and give us your name and where you're from. I want to say we have one brother to the back. I didn't get the name. We say welcome to Ebenezer this morning and we pray that you will be blessed this morning and God will have, he do have a word for you this morning. I want to take the time out to welcome brother Keandre and sister right here who is with Reverend Warner. Welcome to Ebenezer this morning. To those on the Zoom platform, we say welcome. Is there anybody celebrating a birthday or anniversary today or during the course of the week? Please stand so we can celebrate with you. We have Brother Devon. He will be celebrating on Friday, the 3rd of September. <laughs> Remain standing for the Devon. Let us sing the happy birthday song for Devon.
there's no anniversary, but the one will, Reverend Warner will ask you to bless the birthday celebrant, please. So on the, the birthday list, we have Sister Francine Samuel and Amias Williams, who is over there. And I didn't see him, Mom, stand with him. But we ask God blessings upon them also. Let us turn our attention to the notices. Weekly activities continue with evening manor on Tuesdays at 7 p.m., prayer meeting on Saturdays at 5.30 a.m., both on the Zoom platform. We continue to appeal for the 100 sacrificial offering towards the financial upkeep of the conference. The month of September has been earmarked as Christian Education Month. This year, our focus will be on ministry to the young adults the theme for this time of celebration will be knowing the difference, being the difference. Children and Youth Mission Festival will be celebrated on Sunday, 26 September 2021. The theme for this observation is Get On Board. Missionary cards for ages 5 to 19 years are now available. Parents, please ensure that your child has his or her card that they are setting aside $2 from August 22nd to September the 26th. Cards are to be brought in on September, Sunday, September the 26th. This means that the, the cards are to be brought in with at least $70. We look forward to a successful Children's Missionary Festival. Let us continue to remember our sick and our shut-ins in our prayer. And I also do have an announcement from the Provincial Elders Conference of the Moravian Church, Eastern West Indies Province. It reads, Provincial, from Reverend Algernon Lewis, Chairman of PC, Provincial Day of Prayer, dated August 22, 27, 2021. It reads, Dear brothers and sisters, warm Christian greetings in the name of Jesus, our Chief Elder. The province continues in a posture of prayer as we intercede for all the circumstances that face us. The pandemic continues to hamper our lives, and as the new school year begins, there is uncertainty surrounding the delivery of education. Let us therefore focus this day of prayer on our students and the education system. We will meet for a single prayer event at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, September 1st, 2021. 
please ensure that our students are available to share in this time. The link will be provided in time for our day of prayer. Provincial Day of Prayer will be on Wednesday, September the 1st at 7 p.m. And we are asking that our children be available to share in this time of prayer. Rev will send out the link and all the pastors will send out the link in the time for this prayer Me meeting on September the 1st at 7 p.m. Let us repeat the offertory sentence as, we, as the ushers wait upon us. The letter, the letter of James, James records that every generous act comes from God. So let our offering today reflect God's generosity and our gratitude for every gift we have received through God's faithfulness. We'll sing the song, The Well of Tradition. The Well of Tradition have gotten us through. Yet see your disciples the things that they do. Some leaders told Jesus they have no respect. The old ways we follow are what they reject. Jesus for caring too much for rules and traditions and standards and such 
for while they are useful and good in their place, in keeping them sometimes, we overlook grace. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, God, one more time for the gift of giving. We say thank you, Lord God, for this offering that we bring before you this morning. We pray, oh God, that you may use it for the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. God, I bring all those who gave this morning, even those, God, who had, didn't have it to give. We pray, oh God, that you may continue, oh God, to provide for us. Because, God, you promised that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So, Father God, this morning, God, as we gave, even if we didn't give this morning, Lord God, we say thank you because you are still God. And God, you are beautiful in every situation. Even though as human it may look bad, you are still beautiful, God, in that situation. And God, even now at this time, God, I pause to lift up our shuttings, Lord God, before you. God, you know them by name, you know them by nature, God. And I bring them before you and I ask this even now, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit may minister to them. Your holy angels, God, may encamp on about them. Continue, God, to cover them with the blood of Jesus. And God, I lift up those persons who has to take care of them, God, that you may give them added strength, God, that you may give them a word daily, Lord God, so they can minister to these people, Lord God. Father God, it's not easy. It is not an easy thing, God being laid aside being has to depend on someone to do for you God and that someone God who is doing for them sometimes can become frustrated they become tired oh God but I pray this morning that they may draw their strength from you Lord God Father God I lift up our students who are way away studying Lord God you know their whereabouts God you know their name Lord God I pray Lord God that you may continue to protect them you may continue God to cover them with the blood Lord God your Holy Spirit oh God may continue to minister to them Lord God father God when you are away from home you tend to do things that you should not do but help them to know that is not man they're hiding from and they cannot hide anything from you so I pray this morning Lord God as they're there to learn that they may learn God according to your will and God if they plan to come back to our shores God that you may bring them back safely and you may continue to provide for their families God who has to provide for them in some way to Lord God so father God this morning in all we say thank you for everything you have done everything you are doing and everything that you are about to do God regardless of the times that you are we are living in God you, we will be placed in a basket sometimes, God, but we will not drown, God. A gallows may place around our neck, God, but we may not, we will not be hung, God. Father God, we may go through the fire, God, but we will not be burned if we just put our trust in you. So, Father God, into your hands this morning, I just place everything, God. The remaining of this service, God, I place it into your hands, and I say, God, you have your divine way, God, in this place this morning, and the Zoom place platform this morning God because there's no distance oh God in your word Lord God it doesn't matter where we are at you are there so Father God we say thank you thank you thank you in no other name but in the matchless name of Jesus and amen hallelujah we give God praise this morning
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, what's one piece I want to share? You see that word, thanks? God admonishes us to give thanks in every situation. And I can testify to you, I don't have it good all the time. I've never had it good. But you know what? I have learned to say, thank you, Jesus. And when I first started, when I said, thank you, Jesus, he would say, for what? You would hear him say, for what? And I would say, Lord, for everything. And it becomes, and it becomes you, we have to live the word. Live the word. Say, thank you. And even when you don't have, say thanks. And you will see God provide. Some, I was on vacation last week for a week. May had no money went to May had none. And before the week done, me get me no know how. Zalika said to me something. But mommy, how you going? I said, Zalika, look in the pan. You see some money. Give me 350 to pay. But she said, mommy, how you going to get back home? I said, God will make her way home. And I had bus fee for the afternoon, the next day, and the afternoon of the next day. By saying thanks. When I leave, and when I get to my morning times, I say, God, thank you for my daily bread. Thank you for my daily bread. And he provides. If he could do it for me, he could do it for anybody. So let us learn to live. Stand. And this is the time we got to stand upon God's words, you know. And his promises. If you free it, say, God, are you say so? No, me tell you so. Are you tell me so? And he got to come to for you when you remind him of what he says he's going to do for you. Remind him. Remind him. Because if me tells Zalika going to give her something, she's going to come back somewhere. Don't you want mommy remember? You say, she don't do it. She does do it. Mommy remember, you say, you're going to do this. Mommy say, remember, you say, you're going to do that. So when me can't go to God. And he tell me so. Brothers and sisters, let us learn to live by God's words. Stand on his promises. If you do it daily, he will come to you. But if you don't do it, he can't. He can't. He can't do it if you ain't act. He's a gentleman, you know? A gentleman in a force itself upon you. He goes, stay right until you come and say, Daddy, that's him. He's a gentleman. He now forces himself. I've realized it. He now forces himself on nobody. A gentle gentleman that they be. A gentle gentleman he is. Hallelujah. Praise God this morning. As we seek to worship, continue worship God, listening to God through the written and spoken word, we'll now have the scripture readings, which the Hebrew reading will be taken from Deuteronomy chapter 4. Verses 1 to 2 and then 6 to 9 by Brother Curtis Petty. The epistle reading, James 1, 17 to 27 by Brother Christian Petty. The gospel reading by Mark 7, 1 to 8, 14 to 15, 21 to 23 by Sister Petty. reading is from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 1 to 2 continuing at verse 6 through to verse 9 now therefore hearken O Israel unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them that he may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you he shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall he diminish aught from it, that he may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Verse 6, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statues and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who has God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligently, 
lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. The scripture reading is taken from James chapter 1, verse 17 to 27. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, church. The gospel is taken from Mark chapter 7, verse 1 through 8, and then verse 14 to 15, and then 21 to 23. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they, they wash, they eat not, and many other things there be which they have received to hold, as a washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels and of tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, Well had Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This is people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups, and many other things such we do. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are that they defile the man. For of whom within, within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lavishness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. This is the word of God. God. As we prepare our hearts to hear God's spoken word, let us all stand as the praise team will lead us into 
some choruses at this time.
in front. I will place you at your rightful place because you are all that matters. It's not the house, it's not the car, it's not the material things of this world. It is you who matters. You are all that matters. Is there a worship in the house this morning? Who can disagree that God is all that matters? If you are a worshiper this morning and you believe that in all things God is the only thing that matters, just give God a wave offering this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are all that matters. You are God all by yourself. You may be seated. I'll put you in front. In front of my melody. You are all that matters. Good morning, Ebenezer. Good morning. Here too has the Lord helped us. We have gathered in these hallowed walls to worship the risen Savior and to declare yet again that he is able. And as I stand before you this morning, I read in your hearing a familiar psalm, a psalm that is numbered 91. It states, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Surely, he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler, and you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look, and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample on the foot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the word of the Lord. As we reflect for a brief moment, I want to share specifically from verses 5 and 6. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Let us pray. God our Father, you are great and greatly to be praised. You are all that matters. And so God, we yield to you as we need a word from you. Speak clearly, O oh God. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts together, may they find acceptance in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. And the people of God saying, Amen. Amen. 
Psalm 91, as I said to us earlier, is very familiar to us. It captured my attention over the past week, and I'm not sure why. But I found myself drawn to this text. And as I read this text over and over, this thought came to mind. In this uncertain time, I am certain that God will provide and protect. In this uncertain time, I am certain that God will provide and protect. I'm going to say it one more time. In this uncertain time, I am certain. Because there's so many things that we are uncertain about. But there's one thing that I am certain of. That God will provide and God will protect. As I read this text and did some research, there is much uncertainty surrounding this text. Because this text, according to the Bible, is not given to a specific author. We do not know if it was David or if it was Moses. We don't know who wrote this text. We also do not know specifically what was happening at the time that would have given rise to this psalm. However, if we reflect, we know that this psalm is a psalm we draw on when we are experiencing hardship. And inspecting the text and using my, my intellectual ability, I saw that in the text, that there was both personal and communal hardships. Hardships that gave, that may have given birth to fear. So much so that from the onset of the text, hear the writer, whoever dwells, whoever abides in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. As a means of personal testimony, the writer makes it clear that the Lord is my refuge, the Lord is my fortress, the Lord is my God, in him will I trust. Hear this private discussion, maybe among himself, now makes itself into a public declaration of faith. In light of all that is happening, I will trust God. You see, to say that he will trust God says that he has a firm belief in the fact that God is reliable, in the fact that God is true to his every word, to the fact that God is able, and the fact that God is powerful. We see this in the text as the writer says, I will trust God. And as I sat there as Sister, Sister Antet was declaring, I said to the son that came to mind, it is so sweet. To trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the said the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I've proved him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. You see, brothers and sisters, when you know what you know that you have been through, when you understand that you have experienced some stuff, but it was God who made a way, it was God who provided, it was God who protected, you can indeed say it's so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is sweet to trust. In, it's not to say that it would not be hard. But there's a sweetness. There is a peace in trusting in Almighty God. This personal conviction, this personal faith allows the psalmist to speak to his community with confidence. Here he says, right down to verse 3 down to, to 6, he says that more or less there are snares set by the fowler, that there are indeed perilous pestilence, terror by night, arrows that fly by day, pestilence.
pestilence that walk in darkness, destruction and disasters. But the psalmist makes the point, I am not shaken. I am not moved. I am not thrown off my game. There still is a trust in Almighty God because I know that my God is able. I know that my God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I could think, ask, or even imagine. I trust God because this God will deliver. This God will cover. This God will provide a refuge beneath his wings. This God will be a shield and a buckler. Therefore, you shall not be afraid. I don't know, brothers and sisters, but the psalmist says to the community, because of who God is, you shall not be afraid. Thousands may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. But, thank you Jesus, but it shall not come near to you. Hey Jesus, thank you. There will be weapons form, but they will not prosper. Tongues will rise up in judgment, but they shall be condemned. For this is your heritage as children of God and so he goes on to say to them that no evil will befall you no plague shall come to your dwelling the angel shall take charge of the things concerning you and that you will indeed keep you will be kept you will be kept oh my God you will be kept all the days of your life you shall trample you shall tread on the lion and the cobra and the serpent. You shall trample under your feet. You shall call unto God and God will answer. And even in trouble sometimes, God will be there with you to deliver and to honor you. And with long life, he will satisfy you. With long life, he will satisfy you. God still has the final say. Hallelujah. With long life, he will satisfy you and you shall see the salvation of the Lord. You see, my brothers and sisters, I became excited as I read over this text because the reality of the Israelite community is not far-fetched. When I look all around us, we are living in some uncertain times. We are living in a fluid time. One time today, you're up. The next time, you're down. One time you think you're going left, then you're being told to go right. So many things have shifted. So many things have adjusted. And there is a point where we are all, I don't care who you are, we are all experiencing hardship. Rich, poor, black, white, fat, slim, Long here, short here. We are all experiencing hardship. And we have one thing that's dominated our conversation in the past year is this thing called COVID. Because in every alley, we have been affected. Financially, socially, spiritually, physically, and all the other alleys, we have been affected. So much so that some of us are losing hope. Some of us are giving up. Some of us have said, I can't continue. But with confidence, I've come this morning with the surety that God is God. And I who have experienced him as a covering, as one who has provided for me, I can say to you this morning that he will do the same for you. You see, if you'll be honest, there have been some snares. And some of us may not understand what a snare is, but it's a trap. There have been some people who try to set us up, put plans in place to bring about our demise. But thanks be to God, he doesn't allow us to fall in those traps, but he provides a way of escape. And the sad thing about this truth is that sometimes it's not people who we don't know. 
It's people who are very close to us. Some wear the label friend. Some wear the label family. And some even wear the label church brother and sister. Mm -hmm. Setting snares. But God, who protects his own, will provide a way of escape. If we are honest, we have so many illnesses today. So many things are happening. You wonder, what's really going on? But God is still a healer. God is still a balm in Gilead. God is still the greatest physician. And so we can trust this God. There are terrors by night. Some things that annoy us. Let me tell you, moving to, to town has not been easy by. There's some serious annoyances. In the night, you have cars passing up and down. And in the morning, you have a loud staff next door. At the preschool, they just talk loud, 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 loud. And the children are the ones making the noise, but the staff just annoy you. And there are different things that will annoy us. Talk the truth. Not so. Yes. And we may want to take things into matters into our own hands. But put your trust in God. Sometimes you become a target. Simply because you look good. Simply because you smell good. Simply because you try to do your best. You become a target. And you wonder what you do people. You wonder what you do people. And sometimes somebody in, maybe intervene on your behalf and ask, what sin did you do? They can't say. You become a target. And it's like one thing after the other. Like you're trying to get a rest, and then something else comes. When it's not the husband or the wife, it's the children. When it's not the children, it's the friends. When it's not the friends, it's the bills. When it's not the bills, it's the church. It's all kind of things. You become a target. And then destruction on every side. One of the things I've said recently to a friend is that if this world is not coming to an end, then I don't know. Because as soon as you turn on the TV, there's always some sort of disaster taking place, some sort of confusion. My heart goes out to the people of Haiti. An earthquake disrupting their lives again. And before, the president would have been shot. And then the tropical storm, Grace, passed over. I'm like, how much more can they take? How much more can we take? There is fear that looms largely all around us as many contemplate the realities of life, the hardships of today. Some people are wondering if they're going to lose their jobs. Some persons are wondering whether or not the bank will foreclose. Will the bailiff come? What will I eat? What will I drink? And even as sister said today, as a daughter asks, do you have money? How are you going to get back home? Those are simple questions, but profound. Profound. And the truth is, I don't have all the answers. But like the psalmist, I put my trust in God. I put my trust in a God who is a restorer of souls, a God who will provide and protect in these uncertain times. So in reading and rereading the text, I gathered four simple things I want to leave with you. The first, being a child of God does not excuse you nor does it excuse me from experiencing the hardship of life. Many of us want a free pass. 
Many of us want to go through life not experiencing anything. But it's in the process that we build character. It's in the process that integrity is formed. When Job was stripped, his wife more or less said it to him, curse God and die. But Job, understanding that he is not excused from the hardships of life, said to her, you foolish woman, can I not only accept the good, I must also accept the bad. In other words, there will be good times and there will be bad times, but I still trust God. The second thing I gleaned from the passage is that hardships will come at any time. If we look at the text, it talks about the terror by night. It talks about the pestilence that walks in darkness. It talks about the arrows that flies at day and even those things that come at noontime. It does not matter what time, trouble will come. You could be home sleeping, trouble will come. You could be right here in church worshiping, trouble will come. Trouble does not respect anybody. It comes knocking on every door. It does not respect time. And the third thing I gleaned from the passage is that trouble or hardship can take any form. Any form. Terror, pestilence, arrows, and even destruction. But I also gather that in uncertain times, we can be certain that God will provide. God will provide. So we can cast our care on God, for he cares for us. God is our hiding place. This is the assurance for those who put their trust in God. Some trust chariots. Some trust horses, but I will put my trust in the name of the Lord. The imagery in the passage that stands out is a refuge. And this imagery speaks to protection. And I want to use, think of a storm and think about your home. You're in, inside, but there is wind, there is rain, there are so many things flying about, there are so many things happening outside. But you are inside in your house and you are safe. The point I want to make with that analogy is that it's not that a storm is not taking place. It's not that something that is life-threatening is not taking place. It is taking place. But you are sheltered. You are covered because you are inside the house. What am I saying then to you? I am not saying that storms will not happen and difficult times will not come. But if you abide in God, if you put your trust in God, if you rest in God, then you will be safe. You will be safe. God is a refuge and a strength, a very present help in times of trouble. David knew this. Joseph knew this. Saul knew this. Moses, Joshua, even Hagar knew this. In uncertain times, be certain that God will provide and God will protect. So are you afraid? With all that is before us,
Who or what are you afraid of? And if you are afraid, then why? Why be afraid? There is no need to fear if you trust in God. If God is your hiding place, there is no need for you to be afraid. The word of God reminds us that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So what lessons can we take away today? One, hardships will occur, but we need not be afraid. Two, hardships will take different forms, but we need not be afraid. Three, hardships have an expiry date, so we need not be afraid. Rather, in times of hardship, make God your hiding place. Put your trust in God. In times of hardship, take God at his word, believing that no matter the season of life, he will keep his promises. Rather, in times of hardship, change your speech. Use your speech to assure others of God's protection and his care. Speak confidently of God's ableness, God's goodness, and God's mercy, despite or in spite of hardship. In uncertain times, be certain that God will provide and that God will protect. So be not dismayed, whatever betide, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean where we want upon his breast. God will take care of you.
this made. Whatever may come your way, God will take care of you. Be not afraid. Whatever hardship you may face, because God will take care of you. Be not discouraged because God will take care of you. You're feeling the pressure. You're feeling the pain. You're feeling afraid. But here God said to you, I will take care of you. I will cover you. No evil. No destruction. I will take care of you. Will you trust him this morning to do that? Will you trust him this morning to be a fulfiller of his promise? That even as you go through the water, that you will not drown. That even as you go through the fire, you will not burn. Will you trust him enough this morning that as you go through the changing scenes of life will you trust him enough to take care of you if you have placed your trust in almighty God then just raise your right hand with me as we just lift our hands to heaven and if it this morning you are saying yes Lord I trust you Lord I don't know what tomorrow holds I don't even know what this day holds but I trust you God my finances are not the best but I trust you God the marriage is rocky, but God, I trust you. The body is aching, but God, I trust you. Friends forsake me, family are gone, but God, I trust you. Because I know that you will take care of me. lift our hands in adoration to you who are God the one who keeps his word a God who does not lie a God who is faithful a God who is just a God who is from everlasting to everlasting you are that God the Alpha and the Omega this morning, oh God, we declare our trust is in you. We, 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 we yield and we give ourselves totally to your care, oh God. We know that you are able. We know that you can do it, God. So we will not worry, we will not fret. But we place ourselves in your hand this morning, God every area of our life God we place it in your hands 
not some of it, all of it, God. We place it into your hands. And we simply ask, God, that you will do what you alone can do, God. Because we trust you. We trust you. So we are not dismayed. We will not be discouraged. We will not be overwhelmed. We will not shake, but God, we will stand resolute. And even if others say it is foolishness, God, God, we stand still and we will say that you are indeed a God who is able. And so we place our trust in you. We rest assured that you can do it, God. So whether it be in the morning, whether it be at noon time, whether it be at night, God, we are fully protected by you. And we just leave here with that truth, God. Because you are our hiding place. Because of who you are, we are safe. We are protected. We are yours. Lord, we lift up teachers before you. And Lord, so many things have shifted. They have to get a customer to readjust to so much. And it can be overwhelming. Preparing and children are still not learning. Or the children are there but they're not there. God, it can be so much. Authority is putting pressure and demanding so much. But give so little. Lord, uphold them even now. Uphold your children even now, God. Uphold them so much that they'll be able to do what is necessary, what is required of them, God. Grant them success, oh God. That as they teach, oh God, children will understand. As they carry out their different duties, God, they will have good relationships with parents, students and even with their colleagues God God we just pray for harmony and a peace God has surpassed every understanding as they encounter this new school year for the head teachers Lord we pray for wisdom for the ministry officials God we pray for wisdom and understanding and even for the Minister of Education, God. We pray with wisdom, understanding, and insight. As he leads in the season. So bless us all, O oh God. Bless our going out and our coming in. From this time forth and even forevermore. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.
grace of the Lord be with you. Thank you. Do have a wonderful week. And remember, hardships will come. But do not be afraid. They will come at any time. But do not be afraid. They will take various forms. But do not be afraid. Put your trust in Almighty God. And use your speech this week to encourage someone else to do the same. God will take care of you.